Hello, I'm John Benderwolf with Zaljits, and today we're going to visit Ye Old Item Shop. A classic part of RPGs is having to buy and use items. Items can be either important tools to use in and out of battle, or key parts of solving puzzles. This is something that is fairly simple to do within RPG Maker, but it is incredibly important that you get it down. So let's head on over to my computer and work through it together. Okay guys, so we're here in uh, RPG Maker MV like usual, uh, and we will come up here and we'll go to the database, and make sure that you're in the items tab. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to create a new item. So go down to change maximum, increase it by one, and now we have an empty item here. Now this is the area that we need to be paying attention to when it comes to our items. Uh, so let's just sort of name this something. Let's call this uh, um, Max Potion. So we're going to create a Max Potion It's going to heal our people 100%. But let's go through here. We have to choose an icon, double click on that, and go through your icon list and just sort of find something that makes sense for the potion. So we're going to put actually this one. I like that. It's kind of like an elixir looking thing. Now, description you can write something in here to sort of describe what it does. I'm not going to bother with that right now, but it's usually a good idea when you're um, trying to make a game that you intend to release to put what the item does in there, especially if you're naming it like weird things that aren't necessarily like common ways of denoting what an item is within RPGs. So like most people are gonna know max potion probably gonna heal max health, but it's still a good idea to put in description. Um, when you're doing your game, I would suggest doing that. All right, so item type, this defines how it's treated within the menus and like what you can do with it. Uh, the only two that you'll probably pay a ton of attention to are regular item and key item. Hidden item A and hidden item B aren't totally all that useful. It's very situational um, when you use those. But regular items are, you know, your potions, your revives, your, you know, tents, things of that nature, things that can be bought and sold. Uh, things that you can use, get rid of, all that sort of stuff. Um, the vast majority of your items are going to be regular items. Key items are items that are necessary for the plot to move forward or for quests, things of that nature. You can't really get rid of them. You can't sell them um, most of the time, and they're in like a completely different item menu. Um, so this is going to be a regular item. It's price. This is all completely variable depending on the uh, sort of economy of your game. But I'm going to make this thing cost, I don't know, five, oops, one lock isn't on, 5,000. So it's going to cost 5,000 gold. Consumable, pretty self explanatory. When you use it, does it get rid of it? Have you consumed it? Um, yes. Uh, scope, this is useful within battle. It's going to. Um, define when you use the item who does it affect so if it affects one ally it's only you use it you can choose who you use it on and it applies its effect to that one person as opposed to you know one enemy it'll you choose an enemy and it affects that one enemy but this is going to be one ally for us and occasion so this defines when you can use it can you use it at any time? Choose always. Can you only use it when you're in a battle? Something like a bomb or um, basically just a bomb. That's the only example that comes to mind. Then you would choose battle screen. If it's something like a tent or something like that, you can only really use it in the menu screen. Go with that. Or can you never, ever use it like a key item? Like, oh, you have like, you know, uh, some mystical orb that does nothing, then it just, you never use it. But for this, we're going to make it so you can use it whenever. Now this down here, this defines, um, if you want your item to not necessarily always work within battle, or you want it to have different traits when it's used within battle and things of that nature, then you would 
mess with these. Speed being, um, I don't actually know that. Uh, oh, it it affects the turn order. Um, yeah, success. Do, will it have a chance of failing if you use it? Uh, will it happen multiple times? And will you gain TP when you use it? Um, hit type also, this just comes into if you want it to, like if you're throwing a throwing something at somebody, you might want to take into account um, the f the person using it using its chance of hitting versus the enemy's chance of dodging. Same with magic, um, but for an item, certain hit most of the time is the way to go. Um, you can mouse over and read this little description here if you want to know more. Uh, as I said, for things like potions, certain hit is pretty much um, the way to go. Animation. Just set an animation. It's pretty self-explanatory. For this one, we're going to go um, with, uh, let's go with Cure 1, 2. Now, if this is going to be an item that deals damage, you can set a damage type. Um, so HP damage, HP recover, things of that nature. Also, if you want to not necessarily have it heal a certain percentage of someone's health, but you want it to take into account certain stats or certain things. You can have it do HP recover um, instead of what we're going to do in the next step to sort of determine how much health it's going to go or vice versa with MP, things of that nature. Uh, when we talk about abilities next week, this sort of window is going to be something that we're going to be spending a lot of time on. So I'm not going to go too in-depth on it here. Effects, this is where the... Uh, sort of what you're actually doing with the item really comes into play. So you can recover HP, recover MP, gain TP, you can change their states, you can give them buffs, get rid of buffs, things of that nature, you can do special effects, um, you can, like escaping from battle, you can have them sort of gain stats as they're going through that's useful if you don't want to have like traditional leveling at all and you want them to just completely uh, grow based on uh, what items they're using. That might be a cool way to cool way to do it. Also, same with learning skill. If you don't want them to learn skills in a traditional way, you can have them learn a skill by using an item. You can also do a common event, which common events are uh, covered in another spot in the database. Uh, probably won't be going into those because it's kind of a little bit more of a complicated discussion. Maybe I'll maybe I'll go over that in a um, later addendum video, but right now we're not going to go too much into it. So we want it to recover HP and we want to just recover all of it. So click OK. And then down here is your note box. If you're using plugins, you might put notes down here. That's something that we'll cover in a later episode. So we've gone ahead and we've made an item. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy. But what about weapons and armors? Those are other types of items that are very specialized. So let's go into weapon. For the most part, weapon and armor are very similar, so I'm just going to kind of cover one and uh, just sort of talk about the differences between them. So let's create a new weapon. So let's change the maximum and new one. Okay, now we're going to call this a longsword. So just like Adam, choose its icon. We're going to go with the sword icon. Give it a description if you need be. Um, this is, I'm going to do it for this one. This is going to be a long. I am having issue typing today. A long sword. Duh. Okay, so choose its weapon type. Sword. This will define if you're using this the uh, uh, side battlers, this will define what animation plays, and also this defines who is able to equip it. If you remember back to our classes video, that was that was a while ago, that was like episode like four or five or something like that. Um, we talk about setting what types of weapons uh, a character can equip. Well, weapon type is what plays into that. So it's going to be a sword, and this is going to sell for uh, 250 gold. It's going to be a really simple, low-level sword. Give it an animation. This is when you just click attack, what animation plays. So it's going to be uh, slash physical. Now, parameter changes here, if you look through other ones, they give a certain uh, attack 
bonus to the, the player stats. You can have it affect other things, um, but weapons you usually want it to affect attack, and uh, armor usually want it to affect defense. You can also have it affect max attack and max de and magic or magic attack and magic defense. Um, and as I said, any of these other ones, uh, but for like the very simplistic weapons and armor, just kind of these two parameters here. But we're going to have this uh, because it's better than the regular sword, so it's going to increase your attack by 12. It's a pretty good um, step up from the sword. It's enough that it's it's worth, although that's considerably cheaper. Uh, so 750. I didn't even realize that. So... It's it's a step up and it's probably worth the 250 gold that it's going to cost you to get the uh, to get the sword. So now, when you're looking at the other weapons, and note that it's it's usually a good idea to when you're just starting out in RPG Maker to look at what the kind of other default stuff looks like um, because it's it's going to sort of help you figure out what is what and what is kind of a good idea to do. Um, so be looking through the default things, you know, analyze them, sort of reverse engineer, figure out what they're doing to be able to do your own sort of thing. Um, but anyways, back to the longsword here. I don't really want to add any extra traits, but if I did, I could do stuff like uh, have it deal a certain percentage of its damage as a, an element. There's, uh, by default, physical fire, ice, thunder, water, earth, wind, light, darkness. You can add your own elements. Um, which I will cover in an addendum later. You can have it add a debuff whenever it hits. Um, there's a ton of different stuff. You can have it increase your attack speed. It can attack multiple times. You can add skills with it. You can. It's 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 crazy all the different stuff that you can do with this. Just play around, experiment, read about stuff, um, and sort of craft weapons that you want. You can get really tricky with the way that you um, make your weapons. You can make some really, really complex and really, really cool weapons, like swords that deal damage to their user whenever they attack, but they deal massive amounts of damage and you know stuff like that. Just really cool things that you can play with to get going. So now we've made we've made a we've made an item, we've made a weapon, uh, we've talked about armor. So I'm just gonna really quick, I'm just gonna make a piece of armor here, just so that we I can say that we made um, armor. Uh, let's make this a leather hat. Sure. So, uh, do, do, do. That's a cool looking hat. We'll use that. Armor type. This is important here. This is the difference between armor and weapon. Uh, there's armor slots, which is general armor, magic armor, light armor, heavy armor, and then there's shield slots. Certain classes can equip shields, certain classes can't. Um, so if you're making a shield, make sure you set it as a shield. Pretty pretty obvious stuff. This is going to be light armor. It's going to... Let's see what the other hat is. 300? This one's going to be 500. Uh, oops. Not a sh it's a... This is also equipment type. Make sure that you're setting where it's equipped. Uh, so shield, head, body, accessories, head. Um, it's going to give a defense of... Let's go 12. Because I believe the hat is giving 10. Yep. So there we go. We made a hat. Exciting stuff. Make sure you click apply, click OK, and save your game. If you're wondering how to do uh, your item shop, I actually covered that in episode 8, Basic NPC Events. So you can go to that, and that will go over how to make item shops. Then you can place your little shops in these little areas and sell all your cool items that you made. That's it guys and gals, super simple yet super useful. Next time we will take a look at the process behind creating skills, abilities, magic, all of that stuff. You can click on this button over here to see that if it's up. If it's not, that button will instead take you to my channel where you can subscribe. If you like this video, give it a like, leave a comment down below. If you really, really liked it though, you can consider supporting me directly via Patreon. There's a link for that in the description box down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time when I have to defend New York City from a 100-foot-tall marshmallow mascot. It'll be fun, I think, or deadly, I don't know.